Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. And I'm just kind of working on another project, a restart of one that I keep doing over and over and over, and it's version probably 974,312. But, you know what, one of these days I'll actually figure out what the hell I'm doing with this project. So I figured I would stream a little bit, testing out mostly to see that Streamlabs should be working as it intended, but we'll see. I can actually see my preview now, and should be able to see chat like normal, so, yeah, whatever. So, going through, I just started uh, reworking this. I've got uh, three Cindy Studios asset packs in here, City, Town, Explorers, and I'll probably add in a couple more. Um, I'd like to probably go ahead and start doing that now. Because it's some that I know that I'm going to be using. Mostly just for the characters. Um, so like I said, I've got City, Explorers, and Town already in here. And I think... I'm going to add the City characters. If I can find it. City characters pack. This one I got directly from the... Um, from Cinti's website. So you can't really see what I'm doing right now, but what I'm doing is just manually copying it in with File Explorer. If you're not familiar with it, essentially what I'm doing is um, I've got the, the project open here and just going through my documents. I'm rolling projects, looking for the current one I'm messing around with, go to my content folder and just drag it and copy here. Pretty simple. So if you've got stuff you picked up from their website, um, it is pretty easy to work with. So that's city characters. Don't need that one. Not gonna do the Western pack. Not doing the Christmas. Order Pumpkin or Easter Fantasy characters. Um, not going to do the Nature Pack just yet. I'm sure I will. Um, Battle Royale. Dungeons Heist. Mm. I'm probably going to end up with Heist in here, but not yet. Um, Knights, Pirates, Samurai. Sci-fi, Vikings, Warpack, eh. simple props and icons. We'll probably get that in here too, but eh, not yet. All right. So essentially, what I do is, since I know that the um, explorers, I think, has the most complex character. I believe, of all of these. So I'm just going to copy its skeleton over to my new mesh folder. Copy here. And I'm going to rename that to SK underscore polygon, which is what I normally do. And I'm going to go into it. I'm going to ensure that select humanoid rig is there. We don't have a preview mesh yet. We will very shortly. Characters, grab these two guy, a guy and a gal. Right click, skeleton, assign skeleton, SK polygon, and then save all. Then I can go back over here to my mesh folder and open up this guy. We'll use the male character, apply to asset, and save. So now we have a preview asset onto it. Now I can go to the other asset packs like town, meshes, characters, grab all the characters from here, right click, skeleton, assign skeleton, and just go through the list. Alright, so the, this one has IKs in it, so... But now that it's there, we're good to go. So 
So I'll do this for all the different packs and all the different characters. That way I've got a pretty healthy list of characters that I can use. And save all. Next, we'll go to City Characters. Characters. Because I wanted the hot dog. I mean, to be perfectly honest, that's the only thing I really cared about on, on this asset pack, because I had to have the hot dog. It's not the only reason, but it's part of it. So, right click. And this is about as much fun as watching paint dry, so... I apologize for the boring content on this. But you guys have seen this, you know, I've done this pretty much on just about every video that I do the uh, Cinti assets with. I get in the habit of doing the um, the common skeleton so I can do animation blueprints one time and it works for all of the characters. The only exception that I found was in one of the asset packs, the Giants. I think it was the um, fantasy characters. And there's regular sized characters and then there's giant characters. The giant characters oddly enough whenever you, you try to do it it screws up. But then if you try to do it with all of them at the same time. But if you do them separately and give them their own animation blueprint retargeting and all that it works just fine. So characters this will be the last one of them. And so these all have their own physics. This was an earlier pack. Instead of having combined physics. It's a little bit different. But oil well. It wakes. And this will be the last of them. I know that on Heist. There's also an additional. Bone that has to be added in for. Yeah how are we doing. For the mask on the SWAT guy. But this will have me down for all the characters. So I can just go ahead and do one animation blueprint for the unarmed. And I'll be able to, to let all these characters operate off of that. Alright, so save all. And then a quick fix on the UE4 Manicam. Need to tell his buttocks to be humanoid rig. And do the arm fix. How are we doing? You know, this, this fix doesn't require all that much effort to do, but it makes quite a bit of difference. Do modify pose, use current pose, and save, and we are done. And now we can retarget. Go to the emanations. Escape polygon. And just replace third person with unarmed. Change the folder. Characters, emanations, unarmed. And retarget. And we are done. Click and painless. Now we can go to our player blueprint and change from this lovely guy. How is everybody doing this lovely evening? This is my view changer. Let's go ahead and comment that. View swap. Go to our viewport. And you notice the camera is in the correct position now. And as soon as I do the mesh, <coughs> and change, it turns it into an unusual looking hat arrangement. So now I've got all these characters I can choose from, and quick and easy. But of course, the most important 
this guy. <laughs> Had to have the hot dog. No, I'm not going to keep it as the hot dog. But, yay, we're a hot dog. I can't keep it that. But that's the whole point, is I got um, the choice to be able to use all of this stuff here. Gamer Girl, that looks like one from the sci fi pack. Oh, let's see. Fast food guy, businessman, suit. So many characters. Eh, we'll just be the biker dude for now. So, need to look. If we do V, we'll have to move the camera. There is a, and I always forget how to do it, a way to, to make it to where it doesn't see through and doesn't clip. But, eh, oh well. And this is just my test map, so this is where I'll be actually testing a few things out here and there putting things down, maybe creating new meshes as needed. We don't need the mannequin, but I'm going to keep it there anyway, just in case. Map is already saved. It's like you look at the town pack. There's things that I'm going to be doing that are going to... I'm going to need to do testing with, so I'll have to do um, you know, like short versions of and just like do just a small map and um, like vending machines and the props folder of the town there is a soda machine now I have other soda machines that I would probably end up using if I can but there's also ATM machine uh, a couple of those uh, I need to get those working correctly and it's easy to set up once the save game is configured However, the trouble is, um, it's like here's a vending machine. Let's put it at zero and zero. I'm not going to leave it at zero, zero, but so with the vending machine, I want it to be where when you walk up, you have the uh, the menu pop up and you got on the machine you have eight buttons so you'd want to be able to walk up to it and get an interaction menu hit E go into the screen and go through your selection be able to buy drinks from from that machine but since there is no snack machine uh, this would only be suitable for drinks the way it is can't think of any other snack machines unless maybe sci-fi had one in it but I don't think there's any other vending machines just leads you into to needing to do a, um, a store with a vendor lots of vehicles um, I'm thinking like for the vehicles that have more than four tires like this has six wheels so to speak technically there's 10 but um, would end up just doing the same thing and just utilizing the the back wheels as the the drive wheels and the intermediate set just not be there but since we have a plethora of different cars between the different assets um, the cars will have to be functional at some point Interesting the fire truck, you got tow truck, well the flatbed truck, um, pickup, and even the bus only has four wheels, so that shouldn't be too bad. So the only ones that have uh, six wheels is some of the military stuff, the garbage truck, the delivery truck, and the flatbed truck. There's no weapons in this one, so I'm not worried about that. You know, a lot of people that just want to focus in on the Oh, got to have guns, combat, shooting, melee. Man, there's more to, to life and there's more to games than just raw violence.
that's the fun part, but there's more to life than that. Guess I bored everybody and they ran away. All right, so let's go to environment. Lots of road sections. It's just a road corner piece. Interesting. All right, that's nice to know those are there. Now, I'm not going to use this for, for actually building a map right now, but it's nice to know that um, when you're creating these maps, these are 500 by 500 tiles for most of the regular tiles. So unfortunately, kind of the, the, the best way of doing things is to end up doing a lot of individual pieces. It's like this one, control C, control V. But with it being 500 by 500, if you start off with a good zeroed access, uh, axis, then you know that your numbers are going to be on the 500s. So it helps to to know whenever you're lining things up that it's 1500, 500, and zero. Um, but you definitely either want to have either no landscape or you're going to have to hollow out your landscape near where your gutters and stuff like that are so that um, they actually look correct. So like I said, I'm not going to be doing a whole road here. I'm just going to be doing you get your ass at zero and zero no I said control C and control V you ass clown all right so that way get up here you're setting up roads and you actually can have the the gutters show up correctly so a lot of times I end up doing the maps to where it's just uh, everything is floating in the air and just creating boundaries that would keep players inside the map. So if anybody has questions as I'm going along here, feel free to jump in. That doesn't work. But it kind of sort of works there. But why? Why? Because um, if you line it up this way, it don't line up. I mean, you want the sidewalks to line up, but if you do it that way, it's there. So let's try this way. If you do it that way, it still doesn't line up. It's, it's putting the sidewalk over the curb. Unless you're actually intended to but see if you do it that way it still doesn't line up with anything so I don't get that don't get it at all if 
yeah, I don't get it. Um, it just doesn't work right. Is it, it, no matter which way I, I do it, it's not going to line up correctly, and it's going to point the sidewalk to the curb, but you don't get the curb. I mean, this I get. Because now you've got like a crosswalk deal here. And to rotate that one around. And again, I'm not trying to build a whole map here. I created a test map just to mess with the alignment of things to see how they're going to work out. And in this case, let's me see that trying to, to do the sidewalks to the house is going to be interesting. Yeah, so normally I would do it like this and would actually put this next to, let's so you have a sidewalk, then the next would be a curve piece right here for the sidewalk. So I'd look for sidewalk in, sidewalk corner. I do like working with these things though. I like working with um, the Cinti assets. I can move that one to there. No, there. I'm gonna change this back to 10. And the pivot's on the wrong corner from what I was thinking, but whatever. And there you go. Quick and dirty. If you want to, you can grab this, 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 and this. No. Thank you. And quickly zap out an intersection. Control V. Lovely. That'll work. 
Then everything else is just a matter of this. Completed intersection. Whenever I start making a map, I'll end up doing pretty much this. And since doing that, I don't need this anymore. And I can grab all of these. If I know that my player is at zero zero zero, and is it? Yeah, I can use that as a, a guide point. You see, I'm off just by a little bit. Actually, should be perfect. Now that I know that my player start is sitting at zero zero zero, it gives me the ability to now know that this point right here is the dead center point of my map. So as I'm creating my map, I have a good starting point, a good center point, so I know where to go from. Um, let's see here. Environment, and unfortunately, I think it's actually in the other one. But I do like this as well. If you go to the city pack and environments, you've got these four rings, and you just grab them, drag them in, and make sure you zero them out. And what it is, each of these four rings are slightly different size. And what they do is they give you the appearance, and I'll show you for sure here in just a second. Now, whenever you're looking around your map, you've got a city skyline off in the distance, and it just helps to kind of fill out the rest of the map. If your map is not going to be huge, these are great because now you have buildings and then it kind of fades into mountains and you see the clouds in behind that. I'm going to use the, the, the default sky because I think that works pretty good. So that's cool. Um, so now you know that everything is based around this center point. Uh, you can start building out your, your layout, figure out what you want to go where, um, how you want your buildings to be positioned. I'm going to go ahead and put these four right here. So that I have full symmetry on this intersection and then I'll think about the layout of my town from there. Um, if anybody is in the know of what I'm trying to accomplish, uh, this is actually the lobby system. Okay, it looks like a town, or well, it looks like a, a road intersection. But essentially what I'm going to do is I want the lobby of my game to actually be a three-dimensional world. So instead of going into a lobby and searching for a game, you can actually go into the lobby and be part of the game. Let me come over here and make a new folder called Roads. And Sidewalks. Now that I got all this here, 
I can select all of them, shove them in there, minimize, so I can need up my folder. These guys will go into the map shit. Now we have full symmetrical intersection that we can walk around on to kind of get a feel of how our neighborhood's going to evolve. So with this being an actual lobby system, you're going to deal with, there will be other players walking around, vendors, stores, shops, ways to spend your, your credits from playing the different games. And essentially what that does is there will be other games that you launch from inside the lobby. And it's not just one game. Oh, well, you know, Battle Royale. Okay, nice, whatever. If you want to do that, then go do it. You, you want to go to a flying game, you go to the airport. You want to go to a, a naval game, you go to the, um, the seaport. Um, you want to do um, a tank game or an army base or shooter base or whatever. You go to the appropriate area of town, and that's where you launch those from. So we're going to do a quick build while thinking about the next part. So if we keep it all urban, it could be all modern, it could be a city environment we're working with. Um, you know, this just needs to be kind of a diverse area where one area is a built-up city. Yes, I know there's no light map importance because it, it's not importance. There we go. So, one area, you know, it's not going to be a fully symmetrical city with everything in full symmetry. There'll be, um, to the north might be the city, where all the way up here would be, um, an urban developed area. Now, there's one thing I will say that if you start packing all this in here, um, and you're using these road sections all the way down, and then you're using for every grass section throughout the entire map is going to be made out of 500 by 500 tiles you're going to have thousands of actors and if you're running 4,000 actors just for your town then you start packing in um, AI walking around and vendors and cars and, and what have you um, yeah it's going to get really crowded really quickly so what I do suggest is for areas that you can get away with um, in the environmental sections there are let's actually look at town um, I know that there is going to be in the nature pack there's going to be things that you can put down that will encompass larger areas so you don't want to have this entire circled area completely filled up now another thing you can do is you go to your skyline and it has no collision if you're gonna fill every single solitary morsel of space then if you look collision simple there is no collision or it would be a complex collision to begin with um, and there's no way that I know of making a circle collision where uh, yeah so the one thing that everybody hates um, it's you get collision preset block all but if we go over here yeah, not what I wanted to do. And set up something next to it and try to walk into it. As far as I know, there is no collision on it because there is no collision box. But you want to be able to block all whenever you come to that. So instead of having to put a, a hundred freaking things to block you, that's actually... And water is a good way of filling that in too. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to grab this one. Set the height to zero. Bring it over here next to it to where it overlaps into it. I'm going to right click here and play from here. You suck. 
just fell right through that damn tile. Why am I falling through this tile? There used to be, at one point, a, um, an issue with the, the road collisions. And let's go ahead and look at collisions here. Okay, weird. This was updated and fixed, but for some reason, this road section doesn't have collision. So I'm just going to add a box simplified collision and save and it should be block all so that sh should be good now that problem was fixed I don't know why it's being a problem now so you can see I can walk through this and I want to make sure that I say collision preset block all I'm gonna save it for now and play from here it's still going to let you walk right through it. So I'm just going to to make sure I don't fall through while I'm screwing around with this. We want this to actually block our players so that you actually have a natural fence. Because that's going to be no bueno. So, worst case scenario, you could always do the, the dreaded. And I know that people cringe whenever I do this, but you know what? You don't want to do it for everything. You actually want to create the correct collisions. Oh, let's see here. Now, if we play from here, we have just created its own collision, and it's a horrible way of doing it, but it works. All right, so back to what we're talking about here of laying out your maps. Um, Think about how you want your maps to be laid out. You're going to end up with the road pieces in here. That's just going to happen. So you can either just go ahead and suck it up and just throw the road pieces in. If you know that your main drag and all four axes is going to go all the way across, you can go ahead and just start laying them out. Um, the blank sections are fine here. I'm actually going to continue using the ones from town. Yeah, road crossings, road patch, speed bumps. I don't see the roads with the lines in them. Because that one is just blank. It's black only. That's a road patch. So I'm going to have to go back to the city pack. Environment. And we want the road with the yellow line on it. yellow solid line delete that let's try this now see here's the downside of this is the rest of the roads don't have this yellow line on it I guess it doesn't really matter all that much but Let's actually 
Yeah, we'll leave those where they are. And set it at 500. And now, One eighty and let's move it position. See, this isn't the cool stuff, you know. A lot of people would turn tune in and they just want to see the cool stuff, you know. Making blueprints happen and things of that nature. So, which is why I say, if you got questions and what have you, that appears to be doubled up still. And it's not. Okay. And I guess that'll fix itself when the lighting's done, but. And you can grab multiple pieces at a time. Although I would recommend also including your sidewalk. Sidewalk. Straight. You can always come back in and add in other things. Like, see, this isn't going to work because we have grass here. So I'm going to have to go back to the town and get that one so that I can match it up. Now, you could always do the end and blend it in somehow. I think there should be a way of doing that. But we want sidewalk straight. And since all these tiles are 500 by 500, then whenever you're doing this, if you want to add another intersection in, then all you have to do is just remove the tiles that you need to remove. So for something like this, um, move what you're comfortable with four at a time, perhaps. What I'm going to end up doing is doing four by four all else fails click on one tile and see control C and control V is that doing it this way you're gonna end up with a lot and one of the experiments that I want to try is trying to use a spline mesh and see if I can create like the road and sidewalks and all that stuff or even just you know whatever try to come up with a way of doing it to where you, you can use a spline mesh to build these roads because by the time you sit there and do this Right now, we're at 121 actors. That's no problem. Um, my computer can handle this just fine. But there are plenty of people out there still using potatoes. We'll see. Just by extending this road just to that point, just to the, the ring...
paying careful attention to line up these roads just right because they are going to be the building block for the entire town you can see I don't really need to do four more so I'll just grab one more row So now I want to come in here. We're talking about 200 actors right now. And I still have three other roads that I would have to do the same way. But by having that circle going all the way around, a blocking volume, or a blocking system, it'll keep players in. But just you have to remember that anywhere that you can, you want to fill this up with... Um, something. The fact that I'm going to have water is going to help a little bit, but it'll help to minimize the number of tiles that I'm actually putting down. Like I say, this section right here, I could come off from this and actually, let's go back to environments from the city pack. Set one down as an example here, and then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Water's edge straight. Yeah, this is good. So get your ass down to zero. You would put these down next to your edge. This is not where I'd want it, but. This gives you a little little border. It drops down, and now whenever you put your water in, get your ass down there. I don't want you at that depth. Where the hell's the arrow? They're in the center. Now. The thing about it is, is when you're putting your water, it's lovely. It's all that is great. You figure out how deep you want your water, and just because you have it there doesn't mean it has to fill up everything. So that extends below. If you don't want your players going in the water, then it's up to you to, to put blocks in, you know, like blocking collisions and things of that nature. So now, if I come over here and move this water over to there and play from here walk over to the edge and as you can see that would give you a nice little border for your water that you can line up and, and this one's got corners so you could actually do this Get your ass at zero. Like so. And then just build around it. So your water doesn't have to fill the entire thing. And so you don't scrunch up your, your water piece right here. All this can be covered with other stuff and not be a problem. So I'm going to grab this guy just for shits and grins. Take it to zero, and I'm going to do what I hate seeing done. Ten, ten. I mean, you can do this. It's not really that big of a deal. So you can run that grass tile. I think I want to lower it down just a little bit more, but even though it is at zero, and I 
needs to come over. It's not scaled absolutely perfect. Hell, it probably still needs to come over one more. I suck. But you get the point. So you could use that to fill in big blank areas, set up your water. Even though the water extends all the way underneath this other section, you don't see it because it's underground. So you just want to fill out the rest of your stuff here. And since you can see the water going underneath the, um, the city landscape deal, you'd want to go ahead and put something in there like a... And that's something super simple is you could actually take a BSP geometry and give it a material that would be all black and that would actually just camouflage the whole thing or you could do it in blue so it would match the water or what have you and just kind of line off that section with a BSP geometry with that on there so actually not going to keep you or do, or do, or do. Alright, well. I just wanted to do a quick stream. You know, quick. Almost an hour. While trying to get a few things done here. Experiment, lay down the basics of a test map. And kind of figure out what we got to work with. So we're looking at um, 189 actors right there. And that's just one street part of the way up. And I probably could have just done a lighting build only. But it don't matter. You know, when it comes to actually doing the blueprint stuff, um, that's a good portion of the game. But it doesn't matter how cool your, blue, your blueprints are if your maps suck. I'm not saying that my maps are going to be amazing, but just saying if you have a crap map, it doesn't matter how good your, your game is. Played a game a while back just for testing purposes. And, yeah, these roads are different textures. They don't match between the two asset packs. Oh well. But I played this one game. It was a, a side-scroller. I don't really care for side-scrollers for the most part. Um... It was very cartoony looking, which also, I mean, yes, I'm using these assets. These aren't really all that cartoony. I like these. But, I mean, truly, you know, cartoon looking. And it's like totally not my game. I, I just totally don't, there's nothing about it that I liked that would say, gee, I want to go back and play this game again. And yet, I like the fact that the game was done very well for what it was. I didn't have any bugs, no issues with the game. It was... Even though I don't like the look and the style and the feel and that type of game, there was nothing... You know, it had no replay value for me because of my taste. But I really admired the fact that the developers did a good job making the game. The scene continuity, the menus, the sounds, the the looks, everything was really, really well done, and I admired the uh, developers for that. So, spend some time, polish your turd, make it shiny, but 
I'm going to keep playing around with this map a little bit, just kind of getting a feel for what I want and how I want things laid out. I still may end up even doing the uh, the sci-fi, and hell, I might even do the, the western, and if you walk towards this side of town, you might get into an old west cowboy town, whatever, I don't know. I'll just kind of mess with it and see how I feel. I mean, the little factor of this, these two textures not matching each other. I may rip out the whole entire center portion of this street and completely redo it. Probably should have paid more attention to it before I did all the way that far. You think, we've got 189 actors at this point. And we got a long way to go before this map's filled out. But, as I always keep preaching, if you start clean and you maintain, then your map's going to be clean. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Alright guys, I'm going to take a break. If you guys want to see anything in particular, let me know on Discord. Um, I may actually <coughs> jump from doing the map to working on more features. I just kind of got to get my, my head wrapped around this map and get it done. I'm not a big map, per map person, but I need to get a map done. And yes, I know this is a test map, but all I have to do is if I say, okay, well, I don't want this to be a test map anymore, I can just duplicate the map and or just by going over to File and Save Current As and just save a new copy of the same map that I'm already on. So, easy enough. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and so keep up with Discord, and throw some comments to me, let me know what you want to see. See ya.